All eyes are on Kansas with the much-anticipated arrival of Hoops phenom Andrew Wiggins, but a little more than a mile from Allen Fieldhouse, there's a football coach who has a little bit of fixing to do. He is Charlie Weiss, and he joins us now on Campus Insiders. Charlie, I can't imagine one and 11 was any fun, but I'm always looking for the silver lining. What is that for you now that you've had some time to digest the season? Well, the one thing we one thing we could the only thing that we really did positive last year was run the football and. Not only do we have all the running backs uh, back, but you know we add on to that. I think that when you come in and you, you set a flat line as low as we did, your expectation should be that every position should be improved. Let's stick with the offense, Coach. Last year, last in the nation in efficiency, but now you got a new guy behind center, junior transfer Jake Heaps, broke every freshman passing record on creation for BYU a couple of years ago, and he comes with a good bit of starting experience. So how do you see him helping turn things around? Well, I mean, the worst part about last year was watching Jake Heaps over on the defensive field when we were running offense. <laughs> because he is tearing up our defense. Now the good and bad news with that is the good news was that he was slinging it like, you know, as good as anyone I've ever seen. Bad news is he was tearing up our defense while he was doing it. So it was kind of a bad omen when I was watching that. But, uh, you know, after sitting for a year and waiting for his time, you know, as soon as that West Virginia game was over last year, it became his time. And I think that you should see a marked improvement in our passing game. Let's get to the defensive side of the ball. You know, Charlie, there is obviously a calculated risk when you take a transfer who's had off-field transgressions, he's bounced around colleges, and you took that risk with Chris Martin, probably because he was one of the top defensive ends coming out of high school. Now he's gone, just announced after not heeding some stipulations you said after he was arrested for armed robbery at the end of May. As a coach who gives a kid a chance, how do you process all of that? Well, see, you know, every kid is unique, especially when you're going hard into the JUCOs like we did last year. In Chris's case, I st I've known him since he was a sophomore in high school. And he was committed to me at Notre Dame. Then when I got let go, he bailed out and went elsewhere. And, you know, he's had, had some problems. But I felt that if anyone, you know, anyone could help salvage him, you know, I felt that that, that would be me. And it just it just didn't turn out the way, exactly the way I planned. You know, he had some off-field incidents, and that really w wasn't the reason why he was released. He was given a list of stipulations to stay in school. Why that? Why those legal matters were being resolved? He was given a list of a protocol to follow, and he didn't follow all of them. So, therefore, he was dismissed. What did you ask him to do? That's not really you know public knowledge. It's just it wasn't a. It wasn't anything out of line. It was a very simple list of doing things, doing things the right way. And you know, there were a couple of things that he didn't do that were very simple things to follow. Talk about the guys you do have coming back. Six returning starters on defense, but this was a unit that allowed 36 points a game. Give me your top targeted areas for improvement on that side of the ball. Well, I mean, the, you 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 could start anywhere, but I think that we got no pass rush. Which led to you know our coverage uh, coverage guys being hung out to dry. I think it's going to all start with getting more heat on the quarterback up front, because in this league, which is wide open in a Big 12, if you let those guys stand back there as many times as they're going to sling it, you're going to have a big problem. You spent so many years in the NFL, Charlie, and you had three prominent coaching positions at the college level, the head coaches for Notre Dame, and of course here at Kansas in the coordinator position at Florida for a season. When you think about it, what's different about your approach to college, if there's something in particular to point to? Well, I think this time around, one of the things I did was to, took a lot more time to make sure I got that blend of veteran and youth, you know, uh, and our, my, my coaching staff where the camaraderie and the chemistry is much better. And I think that that, you know, that, that chemistry permeates through the entire team. And I think that after we, you know, kind of cleared the closet last year and we came in and got rid of, you know, 29 scholarship players from a team that was already, you know, def talent deficient, I think we kind of opened, opened the opportunity for everyone just about anywhere to come in and have an opportunity to get out there and go. And I think that that's really actually made recruiting a little bit e easier for us because people across the country see that this is a golden opportunity if they're good enough to get out there and play early. 
Thanks so much for the time, Coach. Great talking to you. Uh, Bonnie, we haven't, we haven't talked in a while. I know. <laughs> it, it's been really nice catching up with you. I wish we had more time to spend, but I have a feeling we'll catch up offline. Thanks for All the right. time. All right. Take care. Well, which power forwards top Seth Davis's draft list? Find out right now. Head over to CampusInsiders.com.